to be joining your show and I think at the end of the day it's a platform for learning encouragement and inspiring other people so thank you for making this available for a lot of people to be encouraged great and I would like to start by saying do you want to tell us something about yourself Rebecca Oh, Rebecca, I think that's one of the questions I've been also rediscovering again. I think no matter how old you are, I just um, turned 46 and it's most of the times we describe ourselves with being a mom because of our children or we describe ourselves because of what we do. So part of the unpacking is I'm not what I do. I'm this young woman with the inside me and I think you talked about reversing time. I'm vibrant, I love life, I'm hopeful um, about the future, about the now, the present. I'm also a woman who is inspired by other women. I'm very passionate about women empowerment. I am moved by pain um, if I see their suffering, especially now with the COVID pandemic and um, want to see people succeed. So it's really about um, me wanting to live out the, the gifts that I have, the talents that I have, and, and I'm a visionary, a dreamer, and um, so that's who Rebecca is. <laughs> oh, vision is something that I discovered along my journey of growing up, and you, three, you see it through other people when you look at things that you imagine for your life. That's what vision is for me, it's seeing beyond your circumstances. And as a young kid, went through some challenges where financially our family struggled a bit because my dad had lost his job. And at that point, being a young woman, I think a lot of women also look to men to say, you are my provider. And as a daughter of a strong, powerful dad, um, seeing him having to restart you know, his career yeah. from being a manager to be running his own business, for me, vision showed me that you know you can also re-envision who you can become um, even after a loss. And also having a vision for myself um, to say, okay, with or without my father's provision, can I still have a vision? So I had dreams. I would play with the wooden spoon in the brush and pretend I was on stage talking or singing. And I honestly remember um, our parents were extending the house and on the foundation that was being built, I was thinking this was my stage and the trees was, were my audience. And fast forward now in my 40s, you know, even, you know, before lockdown, there's a lot of stages and platform one had to speak at with microphones um, here and there. So vision for me is always about seeing beyond your circumstances, it's seeing what you aspire to be, um, seeing what your grown up version can be, um, seeing things that you can um, also attain and things that you can also um, be able to give to other people and be a blessing to them. So vision is really about using my imagination and always having that hopeful, hopeful daydream um, trip about whatever life is. But when it comes to organizations on a serious yeah. note, vision is really about how they write down how they're going to execute their vision for their business. So they see themselves succeeding in that industry. They see themselves being maybe game changers in technology or innovation. So at the end of the day, it's really about seeing beyond where you are, where you aspire to move to. Yeah. And I mean, vision is a big part of what you do as a coach. I've had 
the hats down. So, Oh, that's a great question, really, because when a lot of people, you know, they'll see companies having their vision, but from a personal perspective, we actually forget that we are it's me incorporated, it's my brand. So where am I going? Where am I taking myself? And how am I gonna be productive? How am I gonna be entrepreneurial? How am I gonna be um, a person that's gonna leave a legacy um, no matter where I am, even if whether it's a small sphere of influence or a large platform that you might be given to be able to make a difference. So many of us will grapple with that question like, who am I and what am I here on earth to do? And no matter how old you are, when you're younger, it's that identity crisis. But when you're like in your midlife, there's a midlife crisis and there are changes in lifestyle or maybe there's a life change um, event that's happened. Maybe a parent dies or a child dies or there's a divorce. And that makes you say to yourself, who am I with or without this title, with or without this job, um, even after retrenchment, for instance, or maybe things are going extremely well. And then you are just feeling there's more to life. I want to make a significant impact beyond just the good life. So I think that's also part of where people find themselves at those crossroads, whether they're coming out of a tragedy or things have been going well and they just want to take it up to the next level. So it's really about sitting down and saying, okay, where do I want to go? And when you envision where you want to go, you ask yourself again, where am I currently? And part of answering that question is, okay, it's a place that I, I want to maybe need more financial support. Maybe I actually need to go back to school because where I am, um, I'm not well equipped for the job that I aspire to go into in the future. And then how do you get there? That's where the vision boarding comes into place to say, okay, where are the different routes that are, what are the options? And the options are numerous. Then you don't feel stuck anymore. And part of it is writing down your ideas, and your goals. And then part of it is setting timelines, anticipate its timelines. And I always recommend the timelines be as conservative as possible, because many times we also are not practical in how we pan out our timelines or map out our timelines. And then from there, then you start writing down the specific actions that you are going to take. And having a vision and when you have a collage of, of pictures, words, um, I will say things that inspire you along the journey. It'll always challenge you to say, let's do something about it today and not wait for tomorrow. So as much as it's about the future, it actually makes you accountable for today's time because you're sowing seed towards what you want to reap in the future. So definitely having a vision and mapping out your vision board is something that I've been um, facilitating for many individuals, couples, families, professionals, um, yeah, the youth, unemployed or employed. So it's something that's a tool that's available for anybody, no matter where you are. But based on your personal journey, it's important for you to sit down and really have that focus and that one-on-one -on -one with yourself to say, how are we, what are we going to do about it? Instead of just wishing, because castles, you can't just keep on building castles in the clouds, right? <laughs> Route, you have a vision board that inspires you? Yes, I do. Yeah. So I've created one every year. Yeah. And I actually started that with my sons. Um, the, I had gone through a divorce. And at that time, we were asking ourselves, okay, um, we were, you know, just all our hope was in the, the father of the, you know, the household, and he was supposed to set the vision. And for us, it was more like to say, okay, do we even have a future? You know, for a woman who's divorced, do you even, can you even have a ministry anymore? Can you, are you qualified? You know, yeah. so that like disrupts your whole world. And then you start trying, you feel lost in a way. And so we sat down and we started writing down to say, okay, what do I have control over? It's my job. Okay. I'm going to work hard at my job and I'll continue to have dreams concerning my job. Um, so 
part of mapping out a vision board for myself, um, it was also say, looking at the different quadrants of life. Um, yeah. Some people refer to the wheel of life, but I had to also make it practical to say, okay, it's the relationship box that's been disrupted, but it's not the rest of the different life aspects that have been disrupted. Even though financially it'll have a knock-on effect, it'll have a knock-on effect on health and wellness, but I needed to make sure that I start taking care and paying attention to those important areas. So part of the vision was I've envisioned for this new role that I just moved into, I need to make it work. So there was yeah. a vision that I was starting to realize, even though another vision, um, I aspired to have a marriage that lasted till death do us part, but that yeah. wasn't happening. So, and then having something visual to wake up every morning to say, okay, Rebecca, take a walk. You need to have enough strength for the day. Yes, yeah. you're emotionally drained, but you're going to have to drink water. You're going to pray. You're going to just get yourself up. This is what it looks like in words like hope, words like courage, words like lioness that were on my vision board, kind of like were willing me to just continue going. And for my boys as well to say, look at mommy. She's le leading by example, but you need to also be accountable for your own dreams. So yeah. you're going to work hard at school and, and just do the best that you can. You know, we know you miss daddy, but can you do the best that you can? So at the end of the day, no matter where you are in your relationships, um, just make sure that you have something visual to inspire you, whether it is words, some people use their computer, some people use, you know, something audio. Um, but for me, the vision board with collages helped. And um, it helped me to also pray better for my kids and for to know what their dreams were and support them to know what they they, they were aspiring for. Yeah. So you Okay, can you repeat that question again? Personal, okay, how to how important is it? Yes, absolutely. Because sometimes when you facilitate group um, workshops, you find people start comparing, they look at what's politically correct. Um, oh, Nishani has something about leadership. Oh, I want to put leadership. And oh, she's putting something about a car, you know, maybe that's not what, what your definition of success is. So you also need to personalize it based on your definition of success. So maybe having a big house is not your definition of success. Maybe you've been there, done that. You've had the big house, but now you're downsizing. So you actually are thinking maybe I'll just invest maybe in a small property or not even invest in property because maybe you want to travel more. So you actually want to get rid of a lot of things and maybe leave it for your children. So at the end of the day, it's extremely important to personalize it. Number one, it's also important because it's your journey. Other people who are in your life, whether it's your spouse or whatever, they are going to support you and also you'll be able to have a common vision together. So the more they understand what your personal vision is, they'll be able to adjust theirs to accommodate yours at your season. For example, if your goal is to get a degree and the other person is, and you're both working, so they know, okay, and we've got little kids. So they might say, okay, I'll take care of the babysitting um, because we know that's what your vision is. But when you don't communicate, then there's going to be challenges. Even holidays or investing in something financially, you might be able to now agree on where you want to save or where you want to spend more on. So it's so important to personalize it because remember at the end of the day, if you're not happy, um, another person cannot make you happy. And by the way, if your dreams don't come true, you cannot blame another person. Because when you go through, let's say, a breakup with someone or even a business partner, you can't go and say, you owe me my life. You owe me my happiness. You owe me my dreams. You owe me my years that I invested in this relationship. And at one point, I felt cheated, you know, where I felt like, oh, my goodness, I lost so much. But at the end of the day, you will recover and your dreams, it'll, you'll be accelerated, actually, the more you're in line and focused on what you want to do and your vision agrees with your whole being, the right people come alongside you and propel you to what you need to do. So at the end of the day, it doesn't help to look back in bitterness and regret and blame mm -hmm. anybody. Um, at the end of the day, I, you know, I thank my ex-husband for him choosing his own path and deciding that his vision for his own personal life was what he wanted to do and pursue it. And at the end of the day, he's a good father. The 
the son, your sons are with him and he's able to lead by example to help them in whatever journeys they're on and i'm whole, whole so at the end of the day everyone is accounted for everybody's still alive everybody's pursuing their dream but at the end of the day you cannot hold anyone hostage and feel that they owe you um, to make your dreams come true so if you start making it personal and just taking accountability on how you set your goals and you pursue your vision, I promise you, you will not regret it. And you'll help many more people. Because when you're self-absorbed and you start wallowing on your pain and regrets, then you're gonna lose out on a, the experience of life. Life is an adventure, you win and lose some, but part of it, having a vision doesn't guarantee that everything will work out perfectly. But it means that as long as you are committed to your vision, at least you'll live a full life and you'll empty yourself of your gifts, your talents. And we always have that saying for Miles Monroe, he says, die empty, not old. You know, mm -hmm. pour yourself out and just live life to the full with step on the pedal and just, because you can't drive with the brakes on. You want to put mm -hmm. on the pedal and just, sometimes you got to brake just to slow down, but you can't drive with your brakes on completely all the time where you're just holding yourself back from living the life that you're meant to have. Wow, that's so powerful. Because it's quite a few powerful things. You know, how, how it's how hard you take responsibility um, for your own happiness, for your own vision, uh, for what makes you do that you like to do. Um, honestly, do. And it's so important to the time of a person of the world pandemic with every single person. Everything is changing. To 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 Oh, yeah, especially the pandemic. I remember we just done vision boards with some individuals right before that. And because I think January, that's when people want to set the tone for the new year, right? It's like, hey, it's now New Year's resolutions and people are just kind of like, ah, we're cheering each other on and people were on a roll. And I remember just feeling this sense of, okay, all that hype about this vision boarding and like thinking 2020 is going to be the best year yet and look at what's happened it seems like the rug has been pulled under our feet from under our feet the script has been flipped upside down this was not part of the dream this was not part of the story and yeah <laughs> like what in the world so it was also coming the coaching side of me had to step in and coach individuals or reaching out to me saying rebecca I actually feel that I've been cheated. It's yeah. like you've been given a race and people have tripped you all the way. And every whoever kind of like, you just felt like there was just, you, there was someone who was holding you back. And number one, I would say with the pandemic, this was the time to kind of dive into almost like hibernation, but during hibernation, there's still work that's being done. So I always say to people, still count the activity that you're doing without the experience let's say you were outdoors selling to people but now the work that you got to do maybe it might be marketing it might be realigning your strategy it might be your sales plan and that work still counts as activity so what people normally end up doing making the mistake is oh no just because i'm not out there with an audience that means that i'm actually not working so it was really just to readjust our definition of what work is because it's just as important as the external work. The behind the scenes work is just as important as the in front of the camera where everybody's seeing the highlight reels um, because there was a whole lot of background work. There was the curtains, there was the design, there was the script writing. So there's a lot of work that would needed to be put in. So, so I was saying to individuals, practice again your script, realign your business. So strategy session, even for corporates, they pay their CEO, CIO, CMO, CHRO to go away to a retreat and they pay money for them to go somewhere and think, you know, they're not in the office, they're not, you know, they're hiding away somewhere and re-strategizing every year or even the middle of the year to, where they need to recalibrate something or even financially, if they find that some things are 
are getting off the rails and they yes. need to realign the team. They do do that. So COVID pandemic has given us the opportunity to kind of like retreat again and relook at where we're going. And the same thing even on a road trip with the vision. A vision is like going on a journey. And then when you find that, oh, there's a boulder, you know, which has blocked the way on yes. where we were going, we're almost there, we're almost at our destination. So now we've got to sit back and look at the map and reroute and we may have to take a detour. We might have to climb over a mountain and abandon that mode of transportation and take a different one because that one won't take you through that area. Yeah. Or you might need to go under and dig a hole and get dynamite. So you got to kind of like start thinking and finding a way to win. Um, Pastor Andre has a book called Find a Way to Win. And that saying it has helped me in so many areas of my life. When, whenever I want to start feeling sorry for myself. So anyone who's gone through, the, I mean, we all in this together, but those who start feeling sorry for themselves, you start losing sight of the vision. And I've seen that with a lot of um, the key source of why a lot of people kind of derail, um, yeah. whether it's in relationships, whether it's in business, even with their own life, where they self implode is because they've lost sight of the vision of where they were going originally. So now they abandon ship and say, okay, I give up. I'm not going there anymore yet. Maybe there were a few turns just around the corner, that was their breakthrough. And so yeah. that's why you can't give up. So as much as we feel cheated of time, some people, I mean, there was this meme going, I am not celebrating 2020 because I do not. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I saw that, yes. It was, it was, I mean, we were laughing about it, but actually at the end of the day, it did affect everybody. And there were times, even personally, I was feeling fear. I was feeling, uh, breaking out into sweat, thinking what is going to happen. And fear will will attack everybody. So no one is immune to fear because of yeah. what was happening. However, it was where you just have the courage while having that fear to just start drowning out the noise of fear and amplifying the voice of hope and saying, okay, how do we now tune, it, tune down and maybe even change the frequency and tune into the station of hope and just saying, okay, where is the content that's going to help me to start getting back on my feet again? Okay, maybe I might need to change careers. Maybe I need to enroll in a school. I need to learn a new language. I need to, so you, and I need to work out. I need, oh, by the way, I can't go to the gym, but there's YouTube. And yeah. I always said I wanted to do Pilates. Let me start getting my body into shape so my mind can start finding, yeah. fine tuning into there. And then also just finding a way to be grateful. Um, during the pandemic as well, you know, I continue to practice gratitude. I've got a gratitude journal, but also gratitude jar. So if anyone has a gratitude jar, you know, just continue to just um, just write down what you're, what you're grateful for, you know, on a paper and then put it in there and remind yourself that you have a roof over your head. So even during the pandemic, you know, sometimes we can focus on what we lost, but there were times when I said, when they said, everybody go home, what if you didn't have a home to go to? What if you didn't have a home to go to? So some of the things I was, I'm always grateful for every day is I have a roof over my head. I have a bed to sleep in. I can actually sleep under warm blankets. As much as it sounds like it's a simple thing to be grateful for, but it, it, some people were completely left out in the cold. Um, during the tough times. So I think during the, there's a lot of negativity that's happened and a lot of knock on effect, maybe salaries were not there. Business wise, I think you and I know with our industry, a lot of things change. So I think there was a lot of um, negative effects of the, the pandemic. But at the end of the day, remember, we are still responsible at how we respond to life, whether it's a positive event or negative event. So we still have to be resilient enough to say we're going to work through this our great 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 grandparents they worked through some pandemic they worked through some um global crises and they still made it out and we're here today so we need to leave a legacy for our children so when they're saying flatten the curve stay at home it wasn't really it, i was thinking also we're not doing this just for ourselves it's for our future generations as well because we want to preserve ourselves and we want to preserve the legacy whatever knowledge that we have in our gifts so when we come out of this we're still able to execute on it and propel the next generation to whatever they need to 
um, be, they are designed for. So all this responsibility is still up to us. Yes, negative things have happened. We will heal. So if you're in pain, you're in pain. Accept the fact that you're in pain and cry it out. And sometimes resting might be the only thing you had to do during the pandemic. So don't compare yourself to other people writing books and publishing. Maybe you were so busy and you were burnt out and to, to preserve yourself was just to do nothing but rest. So I think don't, let, this is why I'm gonna go back for it being personalized. Um, but yes, it was hard, it wasn't easy and it's still not easy, but find a way to win, yeah. no matter what. You mean purpose, how does purpose play a role? Yeah, oh, no, I always look at purpose and faith as being almost like the engine. So whenever I do my vision boards, actually in the center of my vision boards, I always put my faith, um, you know, inspirational words, whether it's, you know, the Bible or I put hope, I put inspiration, I put prayer, I put, you know, Jesus on there. So for me, that's the engine. Um, for me. So everybody comes from different backgrounds, but faith is the hope of things, um, you know, that you don't have. It's like, hey, I don't have this, but I'm going to have faith for it. And faith will help you almost have a, a groundedness about you to keep you centered. And it's your compass, which kind of keeps you knowing where the true north is, because um, everything else is shaking. Everything is uncertain. Everything is actually falling apart. But I still have a true north where I know I can continue. That will be my constant. My constant is that anchor that will hold me in the middle of the storm. Yes, the ship is, is, is got some water in it, but there's an anchor that keeps me um, grounded. And purpose, purpose is so important because I always say purpose is who you're becoming. I mean, I think I was laughing when Michelle Obama's book came out um, with the title Becoming. Funny mm -hmm. enough, a year before that, my, my theme word for my vision, um, so every year I have a vision word. Yes. So my theme word was actually becoming. And that was mainly because when I was facilitating these vision board sessions, I was realizing, wait a minute, it's more than just the getting, and arriving to the destination. It's who I'm becoming in the process of getting there. So for example, if I was shy, but yet my aspirations are to be a businesswoman, I'm going to start stepping out of my shyness to become more social and approach people, whether it's a sales conversation, networking with someone. So I'm becoming more braver and more talkative, you know, even though I would have claimed that I'm like this, like introvert, you know. So at the end of the day, it's really about um, who you're becoming. So purpose, purpose says, you know, what, it, why are you doing this in the first place? What's the why? Yes, it looks amazing on your vision board that, that you want a jet plane, but the jet plane is just a byproduct of your purpose because number one if you've got a global ministry and you're saying i want to travel around the world which means that if the meeting is going to be on a monday in botswana and then the next one is in zambia and the next one is in joburg you're going to need a jet plane because maybe you can book flights that are going to accommodate that right however on the financial box you're going to be making sure that you are also making sure that there's income coming in whether it's working harder now it's actually causing you to work harder to say the purpose that i want to make money is not that people should see me but i need to fund this vision I need to help more people. There's one more person that needs help. There are 10 more people that need help. There are 20 more orphans that need, need to go to school. So your fuel is bigger than just your own personal um, appetite. It's really gonna just kind of help more people. That's why I would say, when it comes to your financial goal, it should not be small enough to say, I just need to meet my financial needs. It's bigger than that. What are the operational costs to running that foundation? What are the operational costs to running that business? So that's why your, your dreams can be so big that they do scare you, they will terrify you. But purpose will push you out of that discomfort. The purpose will kind of get you to press through that fear. Purpose will get you to press through that doubt, you know, that negative self-talk mm -hmm. sometimes that we all face. So purposes and faith is so important. Um, it gets, even if you fail, 
it gives you the strength to get up again and try one more time. Okay, so the first quad, um, so it's not, it's not in any particular order, but there are eight of them that I normally, um, when I'm coaching or I'm facilitating, I normally encourage people to look at these. If you have others, then great, you can always add. Um, first, we can do relationships. Um, so relationships are so important, like, hey, I want to pay, I want to look cute on Instagram and show everybody that I got the ring or whatever. However, it's bigger than that, right? We all know. So you might have romantic um, goals and dreams and aspirations of getting married, or you might say, okay, family-wise, it's more about my children. What are your aspirations in the relationships for your family? And what are some of the aspirations for the relationships in business? Um, so, it, so those are important to put that down and just kind of think through what you envision. So that's one. Then the next one is finances. I mean, all of us need money, 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 money. Yeah, ching, ching. So we <laughs> need the money, right? So we needed to pay for the bills. And I always say to people like, hey, you, the clothes you're wearing, someone had to pay for it. So you, we need money. So you need money. Even if you're giving things away for free, Thank you still you. need money. <laughs> money. Thank you. It's, it's an intricate, important part of our lives. Even the Bible yeah. says money is an answer to everything, right? So it doesn't mean it's a replacement for everything, but it sure can solve a whole lot of problems. So <laughs> money is important. And it also helps fund the dreams that you have. So you speak yes. on relationships, you might say, I want to go on holiday. I want to make sure my family is secure and they have a nice home. So those financial goals are so important and they're, and they're needed. So don't be shy when it comes to your financial dreams. Then the next goal, um, quadrant, I would say, you know, it's really about your career and business, career and business. Because um, some people now have a side hustle um, or side Many gig. People have Many yeah. people, yeah, because we need it's out of necessity, and sometimes it's the passion or purpose project mm -hmm. that drives it, yes, yeah, that drives it, right? And then the next box can be your education or your um, learning and development. So, mm -hmm. education and learning and development, because many times we can aspire for a senior type of role, but we don't have the skills um, for it. So, or we want a role that requires you to be certified and accredited mm -hmm. in a specific field. So it's no use just saying, I wish I could do this and you're ignoring the fact that you need to qualify in order to access that field. So whenever you have a vision for a career goal, guess what? It's gonna open up for you to go back to school one way or another, whether it's through YouTube, whether it's online learning, whether it's micro learning, or whether it is just saying, oh, I need to be around a Nishani so I can hear what how she's done it. She's also a university that you can learn from, or maybe just be more open to learning from whatever platform or medium that comes your way and some people are back going back to school where they're going for their PhDs or master's degrees at, mm -hmm. after 40 so don't ever feel you're too old especially when you're in your 20s and 30s um, we got people in the 50s start signing up for the same degree that you might be putting off so hey carry on with the learning and development goals and then the next goal, um, quadrant is on spirituality because yeah. um, that's it, like we talked about the purpose and the faith. Um, sometimes when we don't have inner peace, when we don't have that centeredness from within the energy that we bring into a space, um, the energy that we bring at home, the energy that we bring in our community, um, what is it, where's the source coming from? So spirituality is important. So for example, you know, making, being consistent in my prayer time could be something that you know that you know is important to you and you want to develop that so that's something that always comes up for me on my vision i always write that down and just envision that whether it's meditation and bible study or um, writing down journaling journaling is sometimes also a spiritual journey for other people um, so then the next box is your volunteering or um, social community um, impact yeah well, yeah, that's always important. So it's not always about the getting. It's not always about I want to be rich and famous. It's also about where do I give back? Um, mm -hmm. Recently, I interviewed this um, gentleman and he's an artist. He's a, he's a photographer, videographer. He's yeah. a singer, he's a DJ. And he said, Rebecca, I always find a way to give back. You know, whenever something big happens in my life, I always want to give back. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. wow, you know, so you don't have to be a nun 
and be a person that only works in the community. You can be mm -hmm. a famous person and still be doing something great for your community. Yeah. So um, th that's it. That's something that all is, and it links back again to gratitude because that's a way to show how grateful you are. And it also helps reminds you no matter how rich you can become, you need to still be reminded about your backyard communities. Um, being to stay humble, it humbles you and it helps you to just remember like, hey, don't get too carried away and think that you've arrived. There's still people that you need to uplift. So as you rise, lift others up. And another box is creative project ah. and travel. Yeah. Mm, isn't that like, oh, everybody wants to travel. Like, can we go somewhere? Overseas. <laughs> so, so there's the creative projects and travel and fun and hobbies, you know, so whatever it is that you think, hey, you know what, I'm getting too serious about life. Let me do something fun with this dance, you know, learn a new dance style. And these YouTube videos, guys, you know, they might, the studios might not be open, but find a tutor, do it virtually, you can find a, an instructor, and they can coach you through the way and just live life and have fun. Don't forget to, to have fun. And creative projects could be maybe you want to renovate a room, um, especially with COVID. I was talking to this colorist and she's a color psychologist and they do interior design. And she was just mentioning how people are sitting in their houses and they're so bored with the drab colors that they were able to ignore during busy in and out kind of days, but because you were living and working in that space, now you want to zhuzh it up a bit. And so part of it is maybe, hey, I need to add color. I need a feature wall. Or I need to change the, you know, the, the curtains and do something different. So have fun with those creative projects. I started getting more into plants. I'm not really, I don't have a green finger. My mom does. But I said, if I'm a mother's daughter, I better know how to keep even a cactus alive. So I figured out succulents can survive. And so that's something that's been a creative project that I've gotten into. So you, you'll find it just brightens up your life a little bit more. And then the last one, what do you think the last one is? It is health and wellness. Yeah. Health and wellness. That has become the forefront issue for all of us, right? Because with the pandemic, they talked about underlying conditions people with underlying conditions, then you start thinking to yourself, okay, what underlying conditions do I have? So you start kind of doing your checkup and looking back at your records and say, okay, I need to take care of that. I need to pay more attention to that. So a lot to do with your walking, your eating habits, exercising. And it's not about the size. It's not about being a size two or size four. It's really about saying, can I live long enough to play with my grandkids? Can I live long enough to travel and be able to do that hiking trip if I have to, if I want to see that, that, that you know, that Coliseum? Am I healthy enough to be able to dance a little, um, to not be worry and have fear that I'm going to die anytime soon? So it's really just about your well-being and it has a lot to also to do with your mental wellness. So it's not just the physical wellness. Mm -hmm. So your health and wellness box should include your emotional and mental wellness. So it's a lot of things that you're reading, a lot of the people that you spend time with, the toxic relationships are very um, important for you to pay attention to. Um, if you find that you're with a narcissist kind of um, partner, and you know, if you just met them and you find, okay, I am dying here. And narcissism is like when someone is just trying to literally kill and crush your spirit. Um, there's no reading between the lines. They, they literally tell you up front that you're terrible. And every time you're with them, you really feel like you're dying. Um, it's important for you to pay attention to that. Or even if you feel depressed, um, maybe based on past experiences and traumas that you've not dealt with, um, it's important. So having a vision actually allows you to work on yourself and just deal with stuff that's always been unattended to. And it doesn't mean that you have to work on everything all the time, but you know, different aspects of your life will happen at different times. So you can have it all, but just not at the same time. <laughs> and again, much of responsibility in life. Um, taking responsibility and living consciously and mm -hmm. for a place of purpose. And that's also exciting because you put know, the video that I that I screened at the beginning of our our show is Kronos which is a social entrepreneurship project. And one of the things that we're very excited about is launching um, a, a, a online 
Jadi kalau boleh pakai boleh. actually like sent me a message she had attended a tw workshop in 2017 and end of 2019 she was saying she had started a baking business yeah. and um, she was just saying she had been sitting on it and it was such a beautiful um, you know feedback from someone that you meet just once in your lifetime and then they send you back a feedback to say hey you know that seed was watered so I think when yeah. it comes to entrepreneurship everybody has got a side hustle um, dream, or even if you don't, you, you know a way to support somebody else. Yeah. Um, even if you're not very interested, you know that as your company, maybe your company is invested in social entrepreneurship, um, in you know ventures, so that you find yeah. a way to still support um, the the individuals trying to just kind of like you said restore dignity at the end of the yeah. day. We yeah. Want to restore. And um, but I want to ask you, what is your secret? What is the secret that you want to find with you? Oh, so hope for me, I just wanted to use the word, the letters of the word hope. Um, so H stands for honesty. Um, stay honest about where you are. You know, if you're struggling, say I'm struggling. Um, be honest. Um, because that's where hope starts getting revived. Because once I know where you are, then I know how to help you. And all of us, if we lie to ourselves and say, no, I'm okay, I'm okay, that means that I'm trying to stifle the voice of hope because hope is always transparent. It just says, hey, I don't have this. So I think number one is about honesty, even to myself. That's something that's helped me along my journey is to say, you know, I don't have it all together. Uh, actually, you know, and then accepting help from other people. Then O stands for open heart, you know, open for business. Because um, when you have a heart that's hardened out of past experiences and hurt and pain, then what happens is we have a closed heart, we have a closed hand, then we're not generous, you know, and mm -hmm. then we're not, not living in a, from a position of abundance. So mm -hmm. open, openness, just always keep your heart open. Then P um, stands for progress, always make progress, um, whether it is crawling crawling on the floor <laughs> from one block to the other, whether it's scraping yourself off the floor, whether it is limping, whether it is sprinting, whether it's soaring, you know, just make some kind of progress. Little progress is still progress. And then 
E stands for expectation. I mean, obviously, that's another acronym for hope, expectation. And it's part of the definition of the word hope. It says that it is an, a desire for a particular thing to happen. And so always have an expectant heart. So don't say you want something to happen. And then at the end of the day, you're, you're complaining. At the end of the day, you're behaving as if and you're sending them signal to people that you're not interested. Hey, I want somebody to love me. And then yet you act very like, hey, don't talk to me, kind of. <laughs> so expectations is, okay, I'm going to just be open, but it means I, I still guard my heart, but I don't harden my heart. So I live with expectation. Whatever I believe, my words confess and declare and follow and support that in my actions as well. So if I want to stay in bed and not exercise, that means that I'm saying I want to be fit, but I'm not doing anything about it. So expectation also says, you know, you, you act out what you want. So that for me is um, what hope stands for. And I hope everyone else out there is encouraged by that. Thank you. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. You, like I said, you've left us with so many nuggets. I almost feel like I can be in a... Road. How do we do? We have to dig under it. Do we get dynamite? What do we do um, to, to to find a way to win? Yeah. And even I think with the bolder point, I think also it's okay to sit out and wait for the extra help that needs to come. So, you know, because sometimes we also feel like if you're a superwoman and you're depleted of your energy, there's a sisterhood and there's a team of people that are always willing to help you. So wait for the rescue team as well. If there are times when you're like, I am depleted, I cannot even do one more thing. That's part of finding a way to win is you call on the extra, extra resources as well. Yeah. Yeah, I saw something the other day that said, um, ask people to support you, actually share the story. There you go. Beautiful. Really, really beautiful. I think oftentimes we don't we don't know how to ask for support. Mm -hmm. But actually, when you start seeing it as shared strength, um, then, then you also far more open and expect. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. So, Rick, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we? Yeah, I just want to encourage you. I think, you know, just looking at your logo says succeed. Uh, that for me just struck a lot in me. And I just said, you know, sometimes, you know, people will try to bury you. Um, COVID-19 tried to bury you, bury your dreams as well. Um, but I always say, you know, that quote which says, you know, they tried to bury us, but they didn't know we were seed. And seed can just crack through, you know, the hardest ground. It, yeah. And sometimes even on in the, in the middle of a tarred road, you'll see something sprouting out of there because maybe a seed was blown by the wind yeah. or whatever. So even when you feel like you're, you're deserted and you're in a desert, there's still plants that can crop up in the middle of a desert as well and um, in the middle of a dry land. So don't feel that, um, you know, there's no hope. Just know that you are seed and there is hope. Even a tree that's been struck down can still sprout out um, mm. some green. And so don't, don't give up. Um, just continue to have a vision. Um, reignite that vision. Look at that vision. Even when you look at that vision, you might say, I'm not where I want to be, but I know where I want to. I'm not, I'm not where I want to be right now, but I know where I'm going. So yeah. having something visually to remind you, even companies, they'll have logos outside, they'll have a vision statement. As employees walk up and down, they know what their values are, they know what their vision statement is, and it really kind of gets ingrained in them. So put your vision board somewhere visible. And just as every time you walk past it, it'll remind you. And before you know it, when things start working out, you'll recognize the help, that shared strength that will show up when you need it. You'll recognize the opportunities that might come through the most indirect up way that you, the most per, the person that you least expected the synergies yeah. that will come up up there so just keep an expectant heart and you know but one thing that you just don't want to do is quit on yourself you know no one else is going to bet on you unless you bet on yourself and you yeah. were created with all the abilities and i would say you are fully loaded with all the apps that you need <laughs> and all the skills and the talents so get them working 
and learn how to use them if you don't know, but you are yeah. well capable of doing what you need to do, but just keep that vision in, in front of you and stay moving, be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's about, it's about me, PTY, what is that vision for you? What is yeah. That yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's a wonderful time to be reuniting the vision that you have no flux in the city. Yeah, but why not? This is a year like no other. You know? And like no other, it's amazing. It comes with surprise. I mean, that's what makes a beautiful story. It's got like riveting events. It's got suspense. It's got drama. It's got tragedy. And it's just like, guys, this is epic. So you are the main actor in this movie. And just title whatever you want it to be. Let it be positive and just shine. And um, we always root for the underdog. The underdog always wins at the end. And yeah. so we're cheering you on along your journey. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time as well, Rebecca. It's been incredible chatting to you. And the hour has just flown by so quickly. Um, and, um, and, and, and I am certainly going to uh, redefine my own vision board tomorrow and write it down, you know. Um, you know, without vision by people perish. And it also says, uh, you know, write down your vision. Make it clear. Make it clear. So that you can run with it. So that you can <laughs> You know, so you know it's 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 very important to to actually write it down and to make it plain. Um, All right, amen. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. Thank you. Like I said, please go to our page, Chronos Online. Um, please like our page and um, let's be in touch. Let's start a conversation and let's plant seeds of hope. Um, so as we say goodnight, I thank you from our team. Myself. Um, and may God bless you, may God make his face to shine upon you, may hope always light your way, and may you uh, become a purveyor of hope, a person of vision, and uh, may all your dreams come true. I really wish that for you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Rebecca. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nishani.